Welcome back. It is Thursday, April 16th. I'm Coach Matt. Coach Ronnie. We've got three five-minute AMRAPs today. Before we get into that, Coach Ronnie's going to warm us up. All right, so for today's warm-up, we have a 10-minute AMRAP movements, getting our hips warmed up, getting our heart rate up, and allowing ourselves to get primed and prepped for our movements today. All right, so in this 10-minute aim round, we start with 10 body bump squats. So you're going to grab at your toes, hips down into a squat position, driving those knees out, standing yourself back up. Um, it's a good opportunity for you if you need to, sit in the bottom of that squat for a little bit, spend some time, you got to warm up those ankles a little bit, to drive those knees out, take advantage of it. 10 reps on that bottom of squat. From there, we go on to five shoulder runs. So, 10 meter distance, just running down and back for five total reps. All right, once you return from those five shuttle runs, you're going into 10 good morning. So this is an opportunity for you to use some weight if you have it. If not, you can just use your own body weight. You're going to focus on hinging at the hips, loading the hamstrings and glutes, keeping that back straight core engaged throughout that good morning, getting ourselves ready for the deadlifts we have today. Finally, we finish with five push-ups, so just solid reps. Make sure your chest makes contact with the floor, full extension of the shoulders. Body stays engaged from the shoulders down to the ankles in one straight line. All right, remember this is a 10 minute AMRAP. wrap. We're gonna circle right back to the top. Throughout the 10 minutes, finish with that push ups, starting back again with the bottom arm squat. So, today's workout is three five minute AMRAPs. wraps. Each AMRAP wrap starts with a uh, by in the walls. Then we go into uh, various reps of deadlift and lateral burpees over the bar. So before we do anything else, we're going to go over the deadlifts and the burpees, uh, starting with the barbell. So if you have a barbell, great. If you have dumbbells, we're going to show you some dumbbell versions. If you have a kettlebell, we're going to show you a single arm version you can do with a dumbbell or a kettlebell. So starting with the barbell. Like any other good deadlift, Ryan wants to make sure his feet, toes are right up underneath the bar, places intersected. He'll reach down, grab it, create tension through the backside of his hamstrings, glutes, tension in the upper back, everything's loaded, driving through the heels and up to the hip. Now, typically, people do that part quite well. So what we want to do here is make sure we're focusing on just our loading of way down. So instead of, or pardon me, what Ronnie wants to do first is make sure he kind of pushes his hips back reloads those hamstrings and glutes until he gets to about the top of the knee. And then he can begin to lower the hips and shoulders simultaneously back to the ground. Back up to the top of the hip, and back on down. You'll notice he's sliding that bar right against his quads until he clears that knee. Show a couple from the side. One common fault, guys, especially if you're rushing or you're very tired, is people start to lean with the shoulders and round over with the shoulders first. And then they try to lower the bar the rest of the way with a rounding back. That sets you up now where you either have to re-engage the bar every repetition and then come back up, which I guess is the most terrible thing to do, come back down. But more likely what's going to happen is you're going to start pulling with a rounded back. And that can potentially lead to a lot of different injuries, strains, pains, and just a waste of a lot of energy. So make sure every time we do, we blow our back tight, we lift up the bar, then maintain that tension in the upper back as you come down. It can be an easy tap and go rep. So let's move on to some dumbbells. We'll just slide this in. There we go. So if I give Ronnie two dumbbells to use, he's going to grab initially the dumbbell by the back side of the, the handle. And as he dips down to the ground for a deadlift, he's going to just touch the head of the dumbbell to the ground each time. So you only need to touch one head. Um, what you'll notice too, guys, is you're going through these double uh, kettlebell or dumbbell deadlifts on the sides, outside the hips. You're probably going to have to lower your hips and torso lower to the ground uh, relative to the bar. So just remember as we're going through with a dumbbell deadlift that we want to lower our hips and not compensate with the upper back by reaching out in front of us to touch the ground. So I know that sometimes when you're tired, the legs, it's very easy to, you go so far down, and then you start to reach from the ground, and then you see all the rounding of the back and things get sloppy. Sometimes as well, our kettlebells and our dumbbells are a little bit lighter than a barbell, so we think we can just power our way through it. And then you guys, you see people 
not really hinging at the hip, but rather just begin bending over and lifting with their low back. Uh, so avoid that to the best of your ability today. Make sure you're keeping a nice flat back throughout the motion. Hips and shoulders rise and lower simultaneously. Going on to, if you have a single dumbbell or a single kettlebell, you've got a couple different variations to put in here. You could do an outside the hip suitcase position. Yeah, up and down. Yeah. Show them from the side. Okay, so you'll notice these different deadlift variations. Everything as far as pushing the hips back first, keeping that upper back engaged. I should be able to coach Ronnie from the front, see his noble fitness logo throughout the motion. All of that stays the same. The only thing that really changes is just how we distribute the weight. Another version you could use with the single would be between the legs, which is the same, same fundamental concepts. The things we want to watch out for on this one is we want to avoid kind of over twisting as we lower down. That, that can be pretty rocky, especially if we're stacking up a lot of reps when the weight's very heavy. So just be aware, kind of keep yourself squared up, facing forward, shoulders uh, even. Good. So those are the three different, four different kettlebell versions or deadlift versions you can do today. Moving on, let's take a look at the lateral curve over the bar. So obviously, you get a bar or dumbbells, you just lateral over the dumbbells, concept's the same. So if Ronnie goes down to the ground, it's the same type of burpee you do any other time. Both feet kick back, hands stay tight to the body, right next to the ribcage. He'll ideally come up, jump to his feet. Good. Here, you want to jump with two feet over the bar. Two feet up, two feet land. So for this type of burpee, you guys, you don't have to jump high in the air and then jump over the bar. Uh, the jump over the bar kind of counts as your jump. And if you want to talk about being as efficient is possible through these. You don't have to even stand all the way up. If you notice when Ronnie does a few reps, he stays very low to the ground, low to the bar, almost bent over even. Just makes it a little faster, spends a little less energy, although staying bent over throughout big sets as we get into later rounds, it is a little tougher to breathe. It's a little, uh, it can be exhausting, so it just pace it out well. So remember guys, as we get into each AM rep, your wall ball piece that we'll show you next is going to be the buy-in, and then you'll do as many reps and rounds each time of the deadlifts and burpee over the bars. So, moving on to the wall ball. So we're going to look at what we're doing with the shoulders, and we're going to look at what we're doing with the hips and range of motion. Then. So, if Ronnie picks that ball up, holds in that front rack position, great, great, great. So one of the common faults we tend to see is people want to grab that bar and they want the ball, they want to put their elbows out here, they want to have their hands on the side of the ball, and that is exhausting for the shoulders, especially over some bigger sets. So Ronnie each time wants to make sure he gets his hands underneath the ball, his elbows down and inside, creates a nice little stack position. A lot of people like to hold the dump or the wall ball in front of their face. Some people, including myself, I actually like to use my chin as like a third piece of the tripod when holding that ball in a rack position. From there, Ronnie's going to go into a full front squat. You guys are going to notice hips break below parallel. He still maintains a nice stack spine with a ball ball right in front of his face. He can drive through the heels, finish with the arms. So remember guys, you want your legs to be the driving force behind the wall ball going into the air. Your arms really just finish the movement. Um, so if Ronnie goes to the wall ball, I mean goes to the wall, he's going to just go through about uh, three full range of motion reps. So commonly, when we're doing wall balls, people start off looking great like that. And as you get very, very tired, the legs start to get burned, we start to see kind of decrease in range of motion. So Ryan starts to short his reps just a little bit, and he throws. And, and what happens is each repetition that we short, we actually decrease the amount of work we're doing. And do that over several sets or a large set, you actually can cut the amount of work you're doing in half, but not for the better. <laughs> uh, so make sure that if we're going through our wall balls, we're prioritizing our range of motion at the hips. For some of you, I, I don't even care how high the wall goes, I want you to focus on maintaining a rhythm, rep after rep, um, with good range of motion at the hips. So, that is the wall balls followed by deadlifts and lateral work over the bars. We'll meet back here in a second for some strategy and tips, tricks to get through this one. 
Okay guys, so in each one of these AMRAPs, you buy in with the wall balls. It's gonna, uh, you want to get through the sets as fast as possible to give you as many, uh, as much time as possible to get through the deadlifts and lateral grip with the bar. So when I say do it as fast as possible, it doesn't mean you have to go completely unbroken. It might actually be faster for many of you to break the sets up into small chunks with small, short windows of rest. So a good strategy I recommend for most people is 10-10-10, very short rest periods, breaking uh, your reps up on the wall ball in that first round, uh, you know, five sets of 10, very short rest. That'll help you, A, have your lungs ready to go for the next part, but it'll hopefully keep you in a pace where you can maintain good solid form on the deadlift. No matter what weight you're using on the deadlift or which variation you're using, we want to make sure we're keeping an upper back tight and engaged. We want to make sure we're loading at the hips, using our hamstrings and glutes to, to bring us back up, not becoming rounded or hinging hard at the low back is our main mover. Again, on the lateral burpees, we're making sure we're pushing that pace. So when we get off the wall wall, we get through those deadlifts, let's leave some energy for ourselves to be able to push through those burpees. Again, it is lateral burpee over bar, so you do not have to come to a full extension of the hip. When you jump, you're just gonna place your feet down on the floor when you're coming out of that burpee, jumping over that object, whatever it is, whether it's your barbell, dumbbell, kettlebell. Just make sure we're going, taking off with two feet in that jump, we're gonna land with two feet in the jump. And right? if you need to, um, for safety reasons, you have to step over it. Just make sure you step over it. Let's do so safely getting through those burpees. Um, again, after we finish that five minute AMRAP of work, we have five minutes of rest. So really utilizing that time, getting uh, yourself rested, getting your heart rate down, focus on your breathing, try to really control that, get your heart ready and primed, lungs ready and primed for that next five minutes of movement. All right guys, so should be a fast, furious, and fun workout. Uh, remember each interval short, uh, but make the most of it. I look forward to doing this one. I know we've tested it in class before, so I uh, look forward to seeing everyone's scores again. Have fun. Let us know if you have any issues or need help scaling accordingly, okay? Good luck and have fun.